All right, so today we're gonna talk about cameras. So we have wanted some kind of camera system for the bus basically since we got the bus. Now, to be perfectly honest, the bus did come with a backup camera. So it does have a small camera in the back. Um, the problem is that camera is terrible. So um, it is a very small screen that's actually a tube, like a little TV, and it's green tinted for some reason. Like it just, you can see stuff kind of, but it's all green. Anyway, it's not a good system. So we've wanted to replace that for a while and to reduce liability and stuff like that, we knew that we're going to get some kind of dash cam or a couple dash cams or something just in case something happens, just to reduce our liability and you know, it's a lot easier to be like, no, I was just sitting here and somebody ran into me if you have the video proof as opposed to it's my word against their word. Um, so, you know, it's just a good insurance policy to have cameras. So we started down the road of, okay, we know we need to replace the backup camera. We would like to have a forward facing camera as well, just to like for the, the reasons I explained. And so we started looking at some of these fancy 360 systems and those like some of those are amazing. What happens is it will actually paint um, it'll overlay a picture of your vehicle and then you can see all around the vehicle in front and on the sides and they're pretty amazing. A lot of those also have the ability to record and so you know we thought maybe that can serve like a dual purpose kind of thing where it will record what's going on and also kind of for security reasons you know if something happens or someone tries to break in or or steal something then you know you have some kind of video evidence or you know at least you have something to give to police so we were like can we use the 360 systems or these car systems to function as that could we get that to work and at this point I'm gonna go with no and that's mostly because um, the cameras that they use in those 360 systems are so wide so the, the it paints a picture all around the bus and so the cameras that they use have a very wide field of view it's like I think some of them are as high as 170 or 180 degrees which is you know a big path so it distorts the image so when I looked into some of them the actual image they record is like extremely distorted it's hard to see stuff like when they um, when they tune the cameras because you kind of have to tune the system um, they use software that kind of like bends that image back into a normal shape but the raw thing that it records is pretty distorted so it didn't seem like it was going to function very well as like the security part of it or the kind of liability reducing part of it um, and so we started maybe could we explore doing like a home system um, there are plenty of home systems now and they've gotten a lot more popular and they come in a bunch of different flavors and there's you know th all things like the nest and the ring cameras that are kind of made like the newer ones that are made for home stuff and we kind of dismiss those almost immediately because they require an internet connection and so we don't want to chew up all our data recording you know nothing or kids running by or whatever um, so that those types of cameras the Arlo's the ring the nest didn't make sense for us almost immediately but there are other systems that um, allow you the same type of remote access um, through your firewall and things like that on your internet um, but that record everything locally so they have some storage device locally that records everything um, just locally so we thought is there a possibility that we could use those as like driving cameras and driving aids um, and we think maybe <laughs> 
we can't really find a good reason why you wouldn't. Um, the cameras are fairly advanced. They have 1080p cameras, they have four megapixel, five megapixel, and now they even have 4K cameras, which are actually eight megapixel uh, sensors. And so the, the image on them is quite clear and they have night vision and all kinds of stuff. So we started looking at those and trying to reduce like, okay, what could we get? What makes sense? How could we use it? And so um, they come in a variety of flavors. Um, there's wireless ones, they're wired, there's power over ethernet, there's ones that you can pan and tilt and have remote access to. There's all different kinds of softwares also to control not only the recording and playback, but also um, when and how the camera, like the, mo the cameras can be motion activated so that they will only record when there's uh, motion. And so um, there's also, there, there's things that will alert you. So if there's motion in a particular area, then it will alert you and, and tell you, hey, something's going on. Um, so we thought those were interesting. And so we did more research. And um, what we decided is we want to avoid kind of the Wi-Fi cameras. Like from our research, there was just too much problems with interference and things like that. But one thing that we did want to do is get a camera that had a single wire. So um, that is, there's only one wire that you have to connect. There's not like a separate power cable and a separate um, video cable and a separate audio, all that. It just, there's a, um, a concept or a technology called power over ethernet in which the power to power the actual camera comes in the same network cable that also transfers the data. And so that was a big thing for us. The recording was a big thing for us. And also having the ability to remotely monitor what's going on was also kind of a big deal. So if we have an internet connection, um, which we are going to try to have, you know, we're not going to be able to all the time, but where we do have an internet connection, then it would allow us to remotely uh, monitor what's going on. So anyway, um, we did cops or research like we always do and um, where we actually landed was just um, this system from Costco and so I believe this system was six ninety nine. is that right? I think it was at the sale price. I think so. Maybe that was the sale price. Well it was on sale. Something so like anyway that. we got the 4k version um, this particular one comes with six cameras and the video recorder, and it is power over Ethernet. And um, it has a bunch of the features that we wanted, and we thought this picture was hilarious. Um, it's way, way clearer than the uh, 1080p. You can see the difference here is day and night. So um, anyway, so we are going to give this a try. So. A lot of times in this kind of scenario where we buy something and then we try to fit it in the bus, what we'll do is we'll take it all apart and see how it all works. And then once we have a good understanding of how it works, then we have more information on how many holes do we have to drill in the bus and where do we have to drill them. And so obviously we'd like to keep holes in the bus to a minimum. Um, but the one thing Michelle did have a little bit of concern about is the cameras are a little big. Um, they're not like the small, you know, road kind of cameras. But I don't know, we've we've got to make compromises somewhere. <laughs> so, so the cameras are a little big. Um, but I think that the system um, will be a good one. So we're going to kind of take it apart and see what all's included and how everything works and get everything working and then tomorrow when we bring the bus we'll have a better idea of how does this thing install and we can temporarily mount the cameras on the roof and see like well is this a good could we use it as a driver assist is that a, a like a realistic thing so anyway that's the project for this week all right so we've opened up the box and looked around a little bit so it comes with i think five other boxes inside one of these has all the cameras in it, <clears throat> so there are six cameras that each look like this. 
And they all come with a stand that's either like that or one of these. So there's six of these and six of these. Um, this is the video recorder. So there's a box with like the remote control and a video cable as well as a mouse. Um, there's six bundles of 60 foot just ethernet cable um, to hook up the cameras with. And then this is the little box of stands as well as like a bunch of little quick start manuals. So anyway, we're gonna try to um, see if we can hook one of these up and download. There's always like firmware downloads or software upload or software updates and things like that. So we'll hook it up and try to get it all running on a small monitor and um, see how it works. Okay, so we've been playing around with the cameras now um, for about a week or so just to get used to how the system works, um, what its capabilities are, um, will it work for us, how do those pictures look, how do the recordings work, all that kind of stuff. So we've just set it up kind of in our kitchen area and I just left it on and left it running and um, it was funny the first night at about, uh, I don't know, five o'clock in the morning, my little girl comes down the stairs and um, they're motion sensing. And so when they see motion, um, they're always recording, but they'll, um, they'll paint um, on the timeline, the little, it'll, it'll paint a little yellow stripe where there's motion. And so I, I got up the next morning and I went and looked and sure enough at, you know, 5 a.m. or whatever, she's crawling down the stairs and she's checking out. You can see her face in the camera kind of looking at stuff. And then she went to the bathroom and then went back upstairs. But it was, um, it was pretty cute to see that. Anyway, we figured that the camera system looks like it's going to work. Um, everything that we've researched and things like that. It looks like it has the capabilities we need. The cameras are very clear. They're 4K resolution. Um, they are extremely clear. So we went and um, kind of put them up where we thought, you know, what can we see, what can't we see. So I was holding them and Michelle's looking in at the monitor. And so we did that kind of stuff um, just to see like, are, can we position these so that they're useful so that we can see cars and we can see blind spots and you know We can see someone's at the door. Or we can see um, You know in the front is it clear? Can we see in front of us? Can I read license plates things like that and? <clears throat> so far It seems to be better than any driving system. I've ever seen so um, the system did come with six cameras and the cameras look like this so they're a little bit bigger um, that was one of Michelle's things was like the cameras are a little large and they are They're the formats a little large um, We've opted to probably use this stand instead of um, instead of this one um, Just this one allows more movement to the camera. It allows us to position it a little bit more uh, precisely so we're probably gonna use those stands um, one of the cool features is this has too is it has kind of a motion light so if it sees motion it'll turn the light on and it also has audio recording which um, most of them don't so it has audio recording and it's got a built-in speaker which would allow us to communicate maybe with someone outside or something like that anyway um, we're pretty happy with them um, they seem to work very well we've had it running now for about a week or so inside and we've gone back and reviewed tape and stuff like that and just to see what they look like um, we ended up using all six of the positions which was great so we had two for the blind spots and then one pointing forward one pointing um, forward out the front window and one in the back to overlook our tow vehicle and and the cameras are kind of wide so you can see um, all the car and sort of all the connection you know all the tow hitch stuff and everything like that and so then we had one more where we just placed inside just pointing at the front door just in case somebody came in we know who's there things like that <clears throat> the problem was the back camera is pretty low to be able to see all the car stuff so we wanted an additional camera way up high that we could kind of see behind the tow vehicle and maybe a little bit further out so we wanted one that was a little bit higher and so we bought another camera and this is the one we chose and it's not the exact same kind 
and um, I'll explain that in a minute. This one, it is still a 4K camera, um, but this one has a, a little bit narrower field of vision, um, which means it can see further clearer, and um, it, this one was rated for extreme weather, and it came with this hood um, that helps to shade the lens and protect it from the elements. Um, whereas these, these are IP67 rated, I believe, which means they should be able to stay in the sun and rain and everything and not be damaged. But the instructions also said, try to keep them sheltered. The instructions didn't say that for this one. It just said, this is rated for extreme weather. But on these, it did say, try to keep them sheltered. So we were trying to figure out how can we shelter these and um, at first, you know, we thought maybe we could do kind of a half dome kind of thing over it and, you know, kind of cover the entire thing. Um, then we saw online there's other cameras like the Arlo's and things like that that have sort of this little clip-on um, kind of shelter that shelters the camera. And so we didn't find any for these, so we decided to try to make some. So... Um, we drew something out on paper that we thought might work as a little um, enclosing cube, sort of, to cover this up. And then um, we cut it out on paper and folded it up and, you know, did some origami stuff to try to um, make a little shelter for this. And then once we got where we were happy with that, um, so we did it on the computer and it went through about probably about five or six revisions and getting these holes in the back right and getting the spacing around the camera right. And then um, we made some prototypes, like some aluminum prototypes. So we've made this and this camera will now slip in to this little casing and this will be a little shelter for it. And so um, we made it just big enough that we could slide the cable in so the cable goes through there. <clears throat> and then um, we position and the little camera, once we get the little thing in, will sit just like that. And this will keep the sun off of it and shade it a little bit here. We built a little kind of a baseball cap type thing for the lens. And so um, we think these are gonna work out pretty well. So they are aluminum, so they shouldn't be subject to um, to corrosion or anything like that so um but we built four of these and um cut them all out and riveted them and they're they're fairly sturdy so we were surprised at, at how sturdy they are so we are gonna cover these with these and use these little mount guys up at the top to start positioning all the cameras so that's the project for today